Picture this. You've just stumbled upon the secret formula that the world's richest people don't want you to know. A formula so powerful, it could turn your financial life around in a heartbeat. But here's the catch. You've got only one shot to get it right. Want to know what it is? Stay tuned, because what you're about to discover could be the game changer you've been waiting for. Today, we're diving into a topic that's more misunderstood than a tweet from Elon Musk. Money. But we're not just scratching the surface, we're exploring a selection of the best principles from the groundbreaking book The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. We're going beyond the numbers and into the mindset that makes millionaires and keeps them that way. So, grab your notepads, because these are lessons that can literally transform your financial destiny. Lesson 1. The Illusion of Reality Alright, let's dive into a paradox that could turn your financial world upside down. You might think you're the Warren Buffett of your circle, making rational money moves left and right. But let's be real. When it comes to money, we're all a bit irrational, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You see, our relationship with money isn't just about numbers and logic, it's deeply emotional. Have you ever felt that adrenaline rush when buying a stock based on a gut feeling? Or maybe you've splurged on something you didn't need just because it was on sale? That's your emotions steering the ship, not your rational mind. But here's where it gets interesting. Our emotional decisions aren't just random acts of impulsivity. They're shaped by a complex web of life experiences, economic conditions, and even sheer luck. Whether you're a Wall Street veteran or a financial newbie, your money moves are influenced by a unique set of circumstances that you might not even be aware of. So, before you judge someone's financial choices, or even your own, consider this. Your understanding of money is based on a tiny fraction of all the financial experiences in the world, yet it heavily influences your actions and beliefs. Recognizing this emotional complexity is your first step to mastering your money game. Once you're aware of it, you can adopt strategies to keep those impulses in check. Maybe it's a 24-hour cooling-off period before making any big financial decisions. Or perhaps it's using a budgeting app to keep an eye on your spending. The next time you're about to make a financial decision, take a step back and ask yourself, is this my rational mind speaking? Or is this an emotional impulse? Your future self will thank you, and you'll be one step closer to understanding the real psychology of money. Lesson 2. The Role of Luck and Risk now let's explore a concept that's often misunderstood yet incredibly vital to your financial journey, the intricate relationship between luck and risk. You see, these two are like siblings, always present but rarely given their due credit. Let's start with a name you might know, Bill Gates. Gates was lucky enough to have access to a computer at his high school, at a time when even most universities didn't have one. He was one of the 300 students in a world of 300 million high school age people who had this unique opportunity. Gates himself admits, If there had been no computer at my school, there would have been no Microsoft. But here's the twist. Gates had a friend, Kent Evans, equally brilliant and equally passionate about computers. They were inseparable, dreaming of future empires. But Kent never got to see that future. He died in a mountaineering accident before graduating high school. The odds of such a tragedy? Also, one in a million. You see, Gates experienced one in a million luck, while Kent faced one in a million risk. Both were shaped by forces beyond their control. Forces that could easily have swung the other way. So when you look at someone's financial success or failure, remember, it's never as straightforward as it seems. Because luck and risk are hard to quantify, we often ignore them, attributing success to skill and failure to the lack of it. But that's a dangerous game. For every Gates, there's a Kent. The line between inspiringly bold and foolishly reckless is often razor thin and only visible in hindsight. So what's the takeaway? Be cautious about who you admire and who you dismiss. Not all success is due to hard work, and not all failure is due to laziness. Keep this in mind when judging people, including yourself. Bill Gates once said, success is a lousy teacher. It seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose. But the same is true for failure. It can trick you into thinking you're doomed when, in reality, you're just experiencing the unforgiving nature of risk. The key is to arrange your financial life so that a setback won't wipe you out, 
allowing you to continue playing until luck turns in your favor. So, the next time you're evaluating your financial decisions or someone else's, remember to give luck and risk the respect they deserve, because nothing is as good or as bad as it seems. Lesson 3. The Danger of Never Enough Imagine you're at an exclusive networking event rubbing shoulders with industry leaders. You overhear that the billionaire earned more in a single business deal than you've made in your entire career. How would you react? Joseph Heller, the author of Catch-22, had a profound response. I have something he will never have. Enough. Now, let's get real with some cautionary tales. Meet Rajat Gupta and Bernie Madoff. These guys were at the pinnacle of success. Money, prestige, the whole nine yards. But their insatiable desire for more led them down a path that ended in prison. They never grasped what enough meant, and it cost them everything. On this matter, Warren Buffett said, to make money they didn't have and didn't need, they risked what they did have and did need. We're not saying don't aim high or don't strive for that next level of success. What we are saying is, Recognize when you've reached a point where the risks outweigh the rewards. So, how do you determine what enough is for you? First, stop playing the comparison game. Whether it's in business or personal life, there will always be someone who appears to have more. Always chasing for more recklessly is a one-way ticket to losing what you've worked so hard for. The bottom line is this. In a world obsessed with more, more success, more status, more everything, Knowing what is enough can be your secret weapon. It's not about settling. It's about preserving what you've earned and making calculated moves to build on it wisely. As you navigate your next business venture or life decision, take a moment to ask, what's enough for me? It's a question that could save you a fortune. Lesson four, the power of compounding. Let's delve into a principle that's often overlooked but essential for your financial growth, the power of compounding over time. You might think that the key to financial success is making brilliant investment choices, but there's another factor that's equally, if not more, important. Time. Take Warren Buffett as an example. The reason for his wealth isn't because of one lucky investment. It's because he's been an exceptional investor for years upon years. The majority of his wealth was accumulated after his 50th birthday, and even more so after he reached the age typically associated with retirement. If he had started investing later in life, or retired earlier, we probably wouldn't even know his name. The lesson here is simple but profound. Consistency and time are your biggest allies in the financial world. Small, smart decisions, made consistently over an extended period, can lead to astonishing results. It's not about making a big splash. It's about creating steady ripples that grow over time. In a culture that's obsessed with getting rich quick, this might sound counterintuitive, but the math is clear. Compounding returns over time can turn even modest, consistent gains into a significant fortune. So, as you navigate your financial journey, remember that it's not just about making the right moves. It's about your ability to keep doing what works over and over again. It's not the most glamorous strategy, but it might just be the most effective. Lesson five. The difference between getting wealthy and staying wealthy. Now let's talk the art of preserving wealth. We often focus on the strategies to get rich, but what about the strategies to stay rich? Let's consider two historical figures. Jesse Livermore, a legendary stock trader, and Abraham Jermansky, a successful real estate developer. Both men made fortunes, but neither could hold on to it. Livermore made billions in today's money by betting against the stock market right before the Great Depression. Jermansky lost everything in the same crash. Fast forward a few years, and Livermore also lost his fortune, eventually taking his own life. So what's the lesson? Making money and keeping it are two different ballgames. If we had to sum up the secret to financial success in one word, it would be survival. You see, the world of finance is unforgiving. Many companies and individuals experience a downfall not because they didn't know how to make money, but because they didn't know how to keep it. Here are three simple rules to live by. 1. Be bulletproof, not flashy. Sure, we all want those big wins, but what you really want is to be financially bulletproof. If you can weather the storms, you'll be around to enjoy the sunny days. 2. Expect the unexpected. 
Life's gonna throw curveballs. Your get rich plan needs to be more like a stay rich plan that can roll with the punches. Three, be hopeful but cautious. It's good to be optimistic about making money, but you've also got to be on the lookout for anything that could trip you up. Think of it as driving a fast car, but knowing when to hit the brakes. A billionaire from Silicon Valley, Michael Moritz, once said that the secret to their long-term success was a constant fear of going out of business. They never rested on their laurels, always assuming that tomorrow would bring new challenges. So never forget that the true skill lies not just in accumulating wealth, but in preserving it. Lesson 6. Tales. You win. Imagine you're an art collector. You buy hundreds of paintings, not just the ones you love, but a whole range. Most of them turn out to be duds, but you snag a Picasso. That one Picasso makes your entire collection priceless. You could have been wrong 99% of the time, but that 1% where you got it right? That's what counts. This is what we call the tail effect. In any venture, be it art, business, or investing, a small number of events usually account for the majority of outcomes. It's like playing the lottery, but with better odds if you play it smart. Look at Walt Disney. He made over 400 cartoons, and most of them were financial flops. But then came Snow White, and boom, Disney was on the map, debts paid off, and a new studio was built. One hit changed everything. In the world of venture capital, it's the same story. Most startups fail, but a tiny percentage become unicorns, making up for all the losses and then some. It's not about being right all the time. It's about being massively right when it counts. The thing is, this tail concept isn't just about companies or investments. It's about you too. Your career, your business ventures, your investments, they're all going to have their ups and downs. But a few key decisions, a few tail events, can make all the difference. It's about taking calculated risks, understanding that not every venture will succeed, but one big win can make all the difference. So, what's the takeaway? Don't be discouraged by failures or setbacks. They're not only normal, but necessary. What really matters is your ability to keep going until you get that one event that changes everything. Lesson 7. Freedom is the ultimate wealth. Now let's talk about something that's often the end game, but rarely discussed. Freedom. You see, the ultimate luxury money can buy isn't a penthouse in Manhattan or a private jet. It's the freedom to live life on your own terms. Think about it. What's the point of amassing wealth if you're shackled to a job you despise? Or if you're constantly stressed about the next financial downturn? The real power of money lies in its ability to give you choices, to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want. A psychologist once said that the most reliable predictor of happiness isn't your income, your job title, or even the size of your house. It's your sense of control over your life. That's right, control. The freedom to make choices that align with your values and desires is the ultimate form of wealth. So, how do you use your money to buy freedom? Start by building a financial cushion. Having a safety net allows you to make choices without the looming threat of financial ruin. Whether it's taking a lower paying job that you love, or taking time off to travel or be with family, having that cushion gives you options. Remember, your ultimate goal isn't just to make money, it's to make your money work for you to give you the freedom and control that enrich your life in ways that material possessions never can. So as you continue on your financial journey, don't just ask yourself, how can I make more money? Ask, how can I use this money to be truly free? In a world where everyone is running the rat race, aiming for higher salaries and fancier titles, be the one who aims for freedom. Because ultimately, the greatest dividend money can pay is the freedom to control your time. Lesson 8. You are not your car. Let's shift gears and delve into a concept that's as intriguing as it is paradoxical. The allure of luxury items, like those high-end sports cars that turn heads wherever they go. This is known as the man-in-the-car paradox, and it's a lesson that could change the way you perceive the pursuit of admiration and respect. Picture this. A Ferrari pulls up, and the engine roars like a lion. Eyes widen, jaws drop. But what's really capturing everyone's attention? Is it the individual behind the wheel, or is it the wheel itself? The truth is, most people are captivated by the car, not the driver. The thought isn't, wow, the person driving that car must be extraordinary. Instead, it's, 
If I had that car, people would think I'm extraordinary. Here's the paradox. Many strive to acquire these luxury items, believing they'll garner respect or even envy. But in reality, people aren't envying the owner, they're envying the item. Your luxury serves as a benchmark for their own aspirations, not as a reason to admire you. So what's the takeaway? It's not about abandoning the pursuit of luxury or success. It's about understanding what those things can actually deliver. If the goal is to gain respect and admiration, your character and the way you carry yourself will go much further than any luxury item ever could. Fancy cars and extravagant watches are great, but it's crucial to recognize that the respect and admiration most are seeking come less from material possessions and more from character and actions. In a world that often confuses material wealth with personal worth, grasping this paradox could be a game changer. It's not just about the car you drive, it's about the life you lead and the impact you create. That's the kind of wealth that truly matters. Lesson 9. Real wealth is invisible. In a world where success is often measured by the flashiness of your car or the size of your home, it's easy to overlook the fact that real wealth is what you don't see. Imagine this. You see someone driving a luxury car, and the immediate assumption is that they must be wealthy. But what if that car was bought on a loan, stretching their monthly budget to the limit? What if that outward display of affluence is actually a financial burden? The truth is, the car tells you that they spent $100,000, but it doesn't tell you anything about their actual wealth. Wealth isn't about the money spent, it's about the money saved and invested. It's the financial assets that haven't been converted into Instagrammable vacations, designer clothes, and fancy dinners. It's the invisible portfolio of investments, the untouched savings account, and the assets that generate income. In essence, wealth gives you options, flexibility, and the freedom to make choices in the future. This distinction between being rich and being wealthy is crucial. Being rich is just displaying current income through lifestyle and possessions. True wealth comes from financial assets, providing a safety net and financial freedom. Richness is visible, but wealth is invisible. It's easy to see who's rich, but it's difficult to see who's wealthy. So what's the lesson here? If you want to build true wealth, focus less on what you can buy and more on how much you can save and invest. It's not about giving up all luxuries. It's about realizing that the path to financial freedom starts with choosing not to spend today to have more options tomorrow. Lesson 10. Save now, smile later. Many people believe they can't save money or don't see the need to. This lesson is for them. Firstly, understand that building wealth isn't just about making more money or getting high investment returns. It's primarily about your savings rate. Think of it like energy efficiency. In the 1970s, there was a fear of running out of oil. But we didn't run out not because we found more oil, but because we became more efficient in using it. Similarly, you can grow your financial wealth, not just by increasing your income, but by decreasing the money you need to spend. Investment returns are uncertain. They depend on market conditions, economic cycles, and many other factors out of your control. But your ability to save is something you can control. It's the surefire way to build wealth over time. If you focus on saving, you're taking the reins of your financial destiny into your own hands. Now let's talk about the value of wealth in relation to what you need. Imagine two people with the same net worth. One is a better investor, but needs more money to maintain their lifestyle. The other is content with less. Who's wealthier? The one who needs less. They get more value out of their investments because their lower expenses mean their savings go further. This brings us to an important point. The psychology of money. Your ability to save is more in your control than you might think. It's tied to your desires, and your desires are tied to how much you care about what others think of you. The less you care about keeping up with the Joneses, the more you'll be able to save. You don't need a specific reason to save money. While it's great to save for a house, a car, or retirement, you can also save just for the sake of saving. Life is unpredictable and having a financial cushion gives you options and flexibility. So if you wish to get ahead in a world obsessed with spending, start building your savings today. And there you have it. 10 life-changing lessons inspired by The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. 
designed to catapult you from financial mediocrity to financial mastery. But before we wrap up, let me leave you with this image. Years from now, you're sitting in a room filled with all the things money can buy. Luxury, comfort, the works. But as you sip on that aged whiskey or enjoy that panoramic view from your penthouse, you realize something. The most valuable thing you own isn't something money can buy. It's the peace of mind, knowing that you've mastered the game most people spend their lives struggling with. You've cracked the code, not just of money, but of a meaningful life. And all it took was the decision to act, to move from theory to practice, from dreaming to doing. So here's a challenge for you. Don't just watch this video, live it. Take one lesson and implement it this week. Whether it's setting up that savings account you've been putting off or finally diving into the world of investing, take that first step. Because remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but it's up to you to take that step. Imagine a life of financial freedom and commit to making it a reality. And hey, when you're sipping champagne on your private yacht or stepping into your dream home, remember this moment. Remember the day you decided not just to play the game, but to master it. Until then, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep winning.